At the end of the 18th century, the most powerful French monarchy would be overthrown by the power of its own people. It has been said that one man, Maximilien de Rospierre, the unofficial head of the Committee of Public Safety, would rise to cast aside a despised king and queen and deliver freedom to the people. But the freedom would come at a cost. The blood of many innocent French people who were put to death by the Committee of Public Safety during the Reign of Terror. Welcome back to Revolutions Revealed. This week, we will continue to look at one of the greatest and bloodiest revolutions in history, the French Revolution. We will investigate and reveal the bloody dictatorship of the French Republic, the Committee of Public Safety, or the CPS. Set up by the National Convention, the CPS formed a de facto government during the Reign of Terror and put some 30,000 people to death by the National Razor, the Guillotine. As we walk along the bank of the Seine River, where the Tuileries once sat, now in its place is a Louvre courtyard. The Tuileries, once a private meeting room of the King, was turned into the meeting place of the notorious Committee of Public Safety. As we walk through the courtyard, you can see the large wooden doors that lead to the meeting room of the CPS. Inside, polished mirrors hang on the wall, glistening chandeliers light the room, and a large, dark green felt table covered with inkwells and piles of paper, dominates the room. The French Republic was ruled by the 12 members of the CPS for 131 days from this very room. Amazingly, however, the 12 men never all gathered in this room at the same time. Here they discussed, and at times hotly debated, the future and security of revolutionary France. Although the CPS had no officially appointed head, outside these wars, Lawyer Maximilien de Rospierre, self-righteous, idealistic, and supposedly incorruptible, was the most powerful and known as head. Rospierre was a master orator. His words were his weapons. The committee presented itself to the public as an administrator, but its real work took place behind closed doors in the cover of darkness. The committee was created on March 1793 by the National Convention. It effectively ruled France during the fifth year of the country's revolution. At the time, Paris was in turmoil. There wasn't enough food for people to survive, and counter-revolutionaries roamed the streets, attempting to dismantle the revolution from within. As well as internal chaos, the weak in France had the armies of England, Poland, Spain, Prussia, and Austria intruding on its borders, and its ports were closed by the British Navy. French historian Sylvia Nelly, in her book, the concise history of the French Revolution, says that France at the time was dealing with anarchy within and outside pressures, yet there was still fantastic hope and boundless idealism for the new republic. The stakes were high for the men in power. If they failed, they would die as criminals. Murderers of the king and all the gains of the revolution would be lost. Princeton professor R. R. Palmer, a renowned expert on the French Revolution, describes France in the fifth summer of revolution as an old house built on various dates, of different materials and in conflicting styles. Extending this analogy, Palmer says the house's inhabitants, the French people, started erecting scaffolds with a view to remodel. There is then a swarm of activity, but the workers do not work together, and the renovation project is doomed to fail. France was at war, there was civil unrest from counter-revolutionaries, the king was dead, and the monarchy was abolished. All hope for the revolution now rested with the CPS. No other body stood for the unity of the republic, and no other body could claim authority over the nation. This was the situation that the 12 members of the committee faced. September the 5th, 1793 was a dark day for Paris. The moon had eclipsed the sun, just like the CPS had eclipsed the sun culotte, or the common people. The crowds gathered to march in the convention. On that dark day, the CPS voted to declare terror as the order of the day, allowing revolutionary armies to use force against its own citizens to ensure compliance with its laws. As the crowd settled, French politician Jumet read out the petition to the convention. He said to the crowd below that every day we learn of new betrayals and new crimes. 
every day we become upset at the discovery and reappearance of new conspiracies. Every day new disturbances stir up the Republic, ready to drag it into their stormy whirlwind. He urged the legislators to put an end to the impious struggle that has been going on since 1789. He then told the crowd, we must either destroy our enemies or they will destroy us. In response to the petition, CPS member Bilord Vahen said that it is time to act and that the time for deliberations is over and that we must place all our enemies under arrest this very day. The crowd erupted with applause, possibly only because they did not want to be seen as enemies to the Republic. The members of the committee were determined to achieve the goal of the revolution at all costs. One of the most notorious committee members, Bayer, said in his report that the royalists wish for blood, and they shall have the blood of the conspirators of the Bristons and Marie Antoinette. He declared the CPS shall at the last exterminate the enemies of the revolution. It is time, more than any time, to fix the destiny of the revolution. This marked the start of the reign of terror, but the committee had a genuine belief that they were saving the revolution and that the royalists wished to destroy it. It was because of this that the convention and the committee formed a revolutionary army of 6,000 men and 1,200 cannoneers to sweep away the conspirators, check the counter-revolutionists and execute the revolutionary law. On the 17th of September, 1793, Twelve days after the reign of terror began, the twelve members of the CPS met again and passed the law of suspect. It was a decree rather than a law, and it gave the committee broad powers to arrest and place into custody suspects, which included those that by their conduct, comments or writing had shown themselves to be enemies of liberty. Suspects had to prove their innocence, overriding a fundamental right proclaimed in the 1789 Declaration of the Rights and Mans of Citizens, where people are innocent until proven guilty. Actions of the Committee of Public Safety in front of the Convention. He urged the Convention to maintain its confidence in the CPS. He said that, We execute this great revolutionary measure, and we bring to all possible considerations, yet we are denounced. Do you believe that without unit in actions, without secrecy in its operations, without the certainty of finding support within the convention, that the government could triumph it over so many obstacles and so many enemies. He then denounces the accusers themselves. These men who have declaimed us have themselves given proof of lack of spirit and baseness. Why then do they want to debase us? Which of our acts have deserved this? He then threatened the denouncers. Those who denounce us have themselves been denounced to the committee. From the accusers they are today, they are going to be the accused tomorrow. Almost half a year after the passing of the law of suspects, the law of 22 Periala was proposed by Giorgio Couton and supported by Robespierre. It was later passed on June 10, 1794 by the CPS. The law gave the already powerful CPS almost total control over the French Republic and virtually all criticism or rebellion towards the government became criminal. This law can be broken down into three main parts. Who could be punished by the Revolutionary Tribunal as enemies of the people, that being those who seek to destroy public liberty by force or cunning, the proof necessary to convict enemies of the people, that being both material or moral, proof in oral or written form, and the punishment for enemies of the people, that being all offences punishable by death. Some members of the CPS were against this law as they feared that it would concentrate power and lead to a dictatorship. Although the CPS was formed to protect France's motto of liberty, equality and fraternity, these laws actually helped the CPS to significantly weaken personal freedoms and liberties that led to what was known as revolutionary paranoia. What started as an executive committee, able to make emergency decisions and deal with day-to-day -day administration when the National Convention was not sitting, turned into a dictatorial body that led France into the reign of terror. 
The CPS is regarded as the first modern day dictatorship. The terror put to death by guillotine, 30,000 nobility, inadequate revolutionaries, and the enemies of the nation, including Marie Antoni and Louis XIV, between the summers of 1793 and 1794. Most of these people pose no threat against the revolutionary government fighting against the despotism of tyranny. The passage of the decree of 22 Periala and its impact on the already terrorised France was too much for the National Convention. Rose-Pierre was killed by guillotine on July the 27th, 1794, exactly one year and a day after entering the Committee of Public Safety, and along with him, the CPS. His old colleagues, or the majority of them, thought that they could go on better without him. The attack on the committee began on the very next day after Rose-Pierre's death, when the convention decreed that a quarter of the committee must retire each month so that no single group should henceforth long wield the public power. A body called the Committee of Public Safety continued to exist for more than a year, but it was less than a shadow of its former self.